The job of the respiratory system is to provide the circulatory system with adequate oxygen to deliver to cells for cellular respiration and also a pathway uh, for them to release carbon dioxide, a waste product of that cellular respiration. In simple terms, the respiratory system is just a series of pipes. So when that diaphragm at the base of the ribs contracts, it pulls air that is rich in oxygen through the nostrils, into the nasal cavity, down into the pharynx, to the larynx, the trachea, which branches into the right and left lung by structures called bronchi. This is the person's left bronchus right here. That subdivides into smaller branches called bronchioles. And at the end of each bronchiole here zoomed in, here's one bronchiole right here, are tiny sacs called alveoli. These grape-like clusters provide a lot of surface area for diffusion of important gases to happen. So you can see as these uh, pulmonary arteries split into pulmonary capillaries, they coat the outside of the alveoli and you can see the blood changing from blue to red, indicating that carbon dioxide is leaving those capillaries and going into the alveoli while oxygen is doing the opposite, diffusing out of the alveoli into the capillaries to be carried away in the pulmonary vein to the rest of the body. If for some reason this fails to happen, our mitochondria will not get their necessary oxygen, which means we cannot make ATP, which means that we die. So our respiratory tract is designed to be sure that this process can occur without any interference. For example, as you guys now know, in the pharynx, the area of the throat where both food and air can pass, there is an epiglottis, which is a little structure that sticks up like this, which most of the time is upward, so that when we breathe, air can come down from our nasal cavity, through our larynx, into our trachea, and so on. However, when we're in the middle of swallowing, that epiglottis closes over the larynx, directing this bolus of food rather than going down the larynx, which would cause us to choke, we'll instead direct it back towards our esophagus, uh, where the sphincter at the top of our esophagus relaxes and allows that food to pass through. Now, choking is a very serious threat, but it's not the most common threat to our respiratory tracts. Most of the other threats are a little bit more subtle. Think pollen, dust, dirt, germs, stuff that's constantly coming in our respiratory tract. What defense do we have against that? Well, just inside our nostrils, you'll find our nose hair, which begins the process of filtering out any large debris. Like if you breathe in a bug by accident, it'll get caught in those hairs, and so you won't have it go all the way down into your lungs and get caught. Our respiratory system also makes a bunch of mucus all the way through our tract, a nice sticky substance that can further trap particles. And just in case some of those particles get down into the very depths of our lungs, that's where the mucus production actually starts. So if a dust particle were somehow to go all the way down to our alveoli, and it landed on the walls of our alveoli, we would have some cells nearby that are making mucus, and the mucus would get secreted out onto the surface, and then a bunch of little cilia right here which would beat that mucus up in a stream that moves upwards. And so that little particle of dust would get carried in the stream until it gets up to the back of our throats, and we kind of want to... <laughs> that mucus production is critical, because nothing can get in the way of the gas exchange happening in the alveoli. CO2 that's being carried on the little red blood cells as they arrive at the pulmonary capillaries must be able to pass across those walls and diffuse into the alveoli to be breathed out. And just the opposite is true of the oxygen molecules. As they come in, they need to diffuse in uh, to hitch a ride on those hemoglobin molecules in the red blood cells and then be carried to the rest of the body. And so without that protective layer of mucus, we, we would be jeopardizing a process that is key to our maintenance of homeostasis.